wait a couple of seconds here to let everyone get out of the waiting room and into the Zoom before we get started. Okay, so I'm going to get started, even though it looks like we still have a few people trickling in, and I'm sure we'll continue to have a few people trickling in. So good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Jill Burnett Maurice, and I am the Graduate Programs Outreach Specialist with Wayne State University Law School Admissions Office. And with me today, I have a few of our current student ambassadors who are also working in the admissions office joining us to do a panel to kind of talk about life as a law student, but a little bit more specifically about what life as a law student during the COVID pandemic has been like for them. I should also mention really briefly that I am also a prayed proud Wayne Law, Wayne Law alumni. So I'm really, really excited to be able to host this with our current students and for us to be able to speak with you all today. So before we get started, I'm going to kind of go around and have each of our current student ambassadors introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about themselves. So Lauren, I'm going to start with you. Hi, everyone. My name's Lauren Ayub. I'm a current 3L and I work in our admissions office. Um, a little bit about myself. I live downtown Detroit. And in terms of the school, I participated in our clinics, uh, judicial externship, um, work in admissions. I'm on oral advocacy and journal. Um, so I'm excited to answer some questions about all of that. And Lauren, even before I move on, I know that you have some post-graduation plans lined up. Would you mind sharing with our um, watchers a little bit about what your post-bar plans are? Yes. Um, so I received a summer associate position with Smith Boy in Grand Rapids, actually. Um, I received it through our OCI program, which is just on-campus interviews, which is um, a specific interviewing process, I guess, uh, that we have available to second year students. Uh, so I will be moving to Grand Rapids soon. <laughs> Congrats. Okay, so I'm going to next move forward with Philip. Would you mind introducing yourself? Sure, my name's Philip. Um, I'm 24. I just had a really rough 1L year. No, that's a joke. I'm 45, married, two kids, retired military. So uh, I'm, I'm called non-traditional, which means old. Um, let's see, mock trial. I'm a member of mock trial. I'm on the Journal of Business Law. Uh, like Lauren, I had a judicial externship this past summer, all via Zoom. I was with the uh, National Labor Relations Board doing employment and labor law in the fall. And I received a summer associate offer for this coming summer with Miller Canfield in downtown Detroit. So I will be summering with them. I'm very excited. And a big Alabama Crimson Tide fan but I, I'm also a Wayne fan, obviously. Wonderful, thank you so much. Okay, and then Michaela, would you mind introducing yourself for us real quick? Sure, hi everybody. My name is Michaela Armstead and I am a 2L. Um, a little bit about me, I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. I am the president of the Black Law Student Association. I'm also in mock trial with Phil. Um, I'm a governor with the Student Board of Governors. And I also participated not in the judicial externship program, but in the corporate counsel externship program and in the pu public service externship program. So for corporate counsel, I was with Project World Worldwide. And then for public service, I was with the Detroit Justice Center. And I really enjoyed both experiences. And this summer is still pending, um, but hopefully I'll know something soon. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started and dive into questions. But before I do, I kind of just want to take a moment to talk about what I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking about and are curious about. And that is, what is fall at Wayne Law going to look like this year? And so at this point, we do not have any concrete plans. Um, I think that we are hopeful that 
if we can return to some form of in-person safely, that we will do so, but those plans have not been made yet. Um, for our 1Ls last year, so our current 1Ls who started law school in fall of 2020, we were able to offer a hybrid off up program for them where they had the option to be fully online. They also had the option to take a couple of classes in person in really small sections, um, socially distanced and big lecture halls that are made for really large groups of students. And then we had to transition to fully online for the winter and the hope is that maybe we will be able to offer something similar like that and that will be our priority for our incoming one else but at this point no decisions have been made and we are just not totally sure what the fall will look like but i'm going to jump in and start with our first question and michaela i'm going to kick it back to you first so all of our current students here started um 2020 in person and then transitioned pretty quickly to an online format. And so Michaela, can you talk a little bit about your experience transitioning to online classes? Was the format really that different? Um, were things really all that different? Obviously, other than just being at your house doing classes instead of it in a lecture hall. Yeah, sure. So transitioning online at first seems scary, but I really honestly feel like Wayne Law professors handled it very well. Um, so we originally transitioned in March. So we kind of started classes in person. And then when the pandemic started, we transitioned online, like the whole entire world. Um, so at first it just, it seemed scary, but I have to say that Wayne Law professors have handled it very, very well. And I've noticed that as time has went on, as opposed to the uh, winter semester of 2020 to the fall semester of 2020, um, professors have really, really taken the time to try to keep us engaged and um, make it as, I guess, make it less tedious being on an online format. So we have done things from having um, asynchronous portions of the class and then synchronous portions of the class, um, breakout rooms, quizzes, just a lot of different things to kind of mitigate the stress of being on an online format. So I have to say that the transition was not as hard as I expected and it's been going well. Of course, I wish that we were in person like I'm sure everybody does, but um, transitioning online wasn't that hard for me. And it, I definitely see professors getting more and more savvy as the, you know, pandemic continues. Awesome, thanks. So Lauren, what about you? How was your experience, especially, especially as you're finishing up your third year here? Yeah, I would reiterate a lot of what Michaela said. I think at first it was really intimidating last year, um, but that being said, the school really uh, stepped up, I think, and tried to take into consideration everyone's different circumstances. We went past bail. For example, a lot of professors changed their syllabi to accommodate students in the different circumstances um, or change their exam formatting. And since then, uh, professors, at least mine, have also, I think, adapted really well in terms of Zoom classes with more breakout rooms, more group discussion, uh, and just generally offering, I think, maybe more opportunities than you would usually have to communicate with each other during lectures. Um, so it's definitely different than being in person and you miss everyone, but I think that the school and the professors have done a really great job in terms of holding classes and making sure that students are still interacting and paying attention. Thank you. Okay, so Philip, I'm going to drop this one to you next. So um, are the resources staff and faculty still accessible in the remote environment? So like the library and all of the different departments, what's your experience with that then? Yeah, I feel like they're all still very much accessible. Um, in some ways, maybe even more so. Um, you don't have to worry uh, so much about hitting office hours. So you drop an email and most professors and staff members are pretty quick to get back to you. Um, so in that regards, I think it's it's been really great. I haven't found any obstacles. And to to speak to the the previous question too, I think you know the growing pains that may have been there in the initial transition period are, are now by and large gone. So any incoming students, if if we aren't in person in the fall, um, they're not going to have to deal with those challenges that we had to deal with uh, when we first switched from in person to Zoom. 
Thank you. Yeah. And what I can say about Wayne Law Admissions specifically is that we are still working in a remote environment, but we are 100% accessible. So if you're calling the main line, you're actually going to be calling and speaking with me. We still have people answering the phones. Um, our ambassadors are working our law inquire email. We have Zoom appointments. We have phone appointments. We're doing as much as we can to be flexible with you guys to make sure that you guys can still get your questions answered, especially if you're thinking about joining us for fall of 2021. So the next question I have is, have you guys noticed any benefits to remote learning or anything that you've really enjoyed about being able to be in a re remote environment versus being in person in lectures? And Lauren, I'll kick this one to you. Yeah, I think there are a few benefits that I've noticed. Um, the primary one is just being able to plan your schedule a little differently. Um, I mentioned I live downtown, so I didn't have to commute, but a lot of students have actually gained a lot of time in their day that were commuting to the university. Um, they've also had a lot of events and things where you can see everyone in person. Um, so it, it's been fun. Um, but the definitely the primary event for me at least was just having a little more leeway and when I wanna plan things around class because you are home. <laughs> um, so you don't have to worry about like driving to school and like hitting traffic and kind of the smaller things maybe that you would before. Thanks. Okay, Michaela, what about you? Any benefits or anything that you've noticed? Yeah, I would definitely have to agree with Lauren that um, just time seems like it's just a little bit easier because, you know, in the pandemic world, I can end a class at 12 and then jump on a panel right at 12, as opposed to if I was in person, I would have to drive um, to wherever the event was or something like that. I just feel like, um, we have a little more time to work with, which is good. But another thing that I've noticed, I think that professors really do take into account the fact that we are learning remotely. And I've noticed that, like Lauren also said earlier, that professors change the syllabi, that professors are kind of more, um, more apt to giving other opportunities to um, earn points or earn bump ups and things like that, as opposed to just being in person and getting participation points. We may have like a discussion board online or something like that, because being in a large person class, a 90 person Zoom class, it can be kind of intimidating and also hard to speak up in class. And they realize that. So I think that that is also a benefit as well. Thank you, Philip. Any last comments? Anything else to add that you've noticed? I think the the Lauren and uh, Michaela pretty much hit them all. Um, I'll say that that for my judicial externship, though, uh, being on Zoom allowed me some unique insights with the judge. So uh, in that regards, I was able to pick his brain between dockets. Um, whereas if we would have been in person in a packed courtroom, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. So that was a, a unique um, silver lining of going to Zoom. Awesome. Okay, so kind of piggybacking off of that, what about networking opportunities? What has the law school done to make sure that you all can still be in contact with your fellow classmates, with different student organizations, with alumni, potential employers? And Michaela, we'll start with you. Yeah, I think the law school has done a lot, um, specifically the events department, Joan and Kaylee, who is lurking in the background right now, um, they've been very supportive just from like planning events um, perspective. They have really, really helped and provided support to make sure that we are providing opportunities for students to interact and get to know each other, which has also pro pro produced challenges with the 1L class because, you know, usually when you're in person, you're having sidebar conversations with your friends, you're realizing who are the people you want to study with, who are the people that are staying in the library late, who are the people that you can go up to and ask a question, and who are the people that may not be so receptive to your questions. Not that there are a lot of those, but, you know, you kind of just know who people are. Um, I think that now more than ever, it's so, so important to get involved in student organizations um, and really be active because that is really how you meet people. And it's so important to have people in law school that will keep you on track, that will help you study because, you know, when you're studying for a law school exam, 
you don't, you may not know that you could be studying something wrong or may not understand something. And when you're in a group discussion, you can bounce ideas off of your classmates and also get understandings that your classmates have and you may not have. So to answer your question, I think that the law school has been very, very, very supportive and not just networking amongst our class, but also networking with um, other people. I know that um, I've been to a couple networking events with alumni actually, and just kind of talking to people and getting to know people. So it's been very good and very helpful. Thanks. Okay, Philip, what about you? I know you mentioned that you were able to land a job for this summer, um, and I'm assuming it was through our OCI process. So can you talk a little bit about that and a little bit about what it looks like in the Zoom kind of setting? Sure, OCI's um, on-campus interviews and in and, and the brick and mortar days uh, of yore. So they would all come to the library, right? So they would have the schedule built out with, um, you know, student one, two, three throughout the day. And you'd go in a room with the uh, the interviewers and and have your interview in person. Obviously, with with COVID and all that goes along with that and social distancing, it switched to Zoom. Um, I, th I think generally the format was same. The same. I had an initial interviewer, um, maybe around half an hour, and that was the first hurdle you had to get get across. And if you got a call back, then you had a panel interview. So I made it to the next round and I had a panel interview with uh, four interviewers, 30 minutes each. Um, and that is the second hurdle. And you, you cross your fingers and hope that you, you get the, um, the offer. That's, that's kind of how it goes. It's a stressful time. But, um, you know, OCIs, um, they do receive a, a lot of attention. But it's only one very small way on having a very rewarding and fulfilling legal career. So. There's a, there's a lot of other avenues and some of them you make yourself, so. Great, Lauren, anything else to add? Um, yeah, I didn't have to uh, find employment during when things were virtual, fortunately. Um, but I will say that there are still a lot of events. One thing that Wayne Law is pretty good about is almost every day, if not every single day, there's an event at lunchtime. Um, and now we have events all throughout the day. There's a lot at like 3 or 4 p.m. even later in the day now that we're virtual and we, um, people have different schedules than they normally would in person. Um, and I think Wayne is great at advertising those events, so you will be made aware of them when you're an incoming student, you'll get lots of emails. Um, some of these events, I've even had like food mailed to my house, so people are really trying to make the best of being virtual um, and providing these opportunities still. Awesome. Okay, so next question. Do you all have any tips or tricks that have helped you be successful in a remote classroom setting? Um, how have you managed to be able to stay focused working remotely? And what has changed about the way that, you've, that you're studying now that you're in an online setting? And Philip, I'll start with you. So for me, I still try to block my time and schedule my time out to, to the best of my ability. And I also have two kids at home doing their school virtual and they don't understand uh, um, that but that's my own personal challenge i got to deal with but i try to block time out um, when class is on I, I have my camera on so i can stay engaged um, it, it's it's easy to not and then you get sidetracked with something or you start you scrolling social media so i try to keep the camera on so i'm plugged in and um i mean I, th those are the main things there um time management is always going to be the biggest thing you got to do in law school i think from from class to study into exam prep it's managing your time all right lauren what about you yeah also just being aware of time management and being aware of maybe how you study differently in a virtual environment um, when we were in person i would stay in the library till 8 9 10 p.m um, and then come home, whereas now I'm home all day. And I personally have noticed that my productivity is much higher in the morning, whereas I used to be very productive at night. So I've been able to arrange my schedule differently. Um, like I'll wake up five, 6 a.m. sometimes and just knock out my projects. Cause I know when 4 p.m. hits after I was on a screen all day, you know, I'm tired. Um, so all that being aware of like your personal study habits is really important in a virtual environment. And then as far as like tips go, I really would encourage everyone um, to not only block your academic commitments, but to block out a, a piece of free time 
which is something we tell students whether or not we're virtual. Um, but block out some time, whether it's to work out, just go outside, watch TV, whatever it is, but get away from the laptop um, so that it's not too draining for you. All right, and Michaela, I'll kick this one to you last. Any additional pieces of advice, anything that you found that works really well for you? Um, yeah, I think they said a lot of it. I think that the biggest thing for me is having a desk where I study and do my work and really like walking to that desk and being at that desk. Um, because I think it's kind of mental for me, like it feels like even though I'm at home, it kind of feels in my brain like I'm not at home anymore. And I'm like growing up in pre-pandemic, I always struggled studying at home because I just had so many distractions. I have like a lot of family members around, dogs. I mean, it's just kind of a lot going on. So in the virtual world, I noticed that I had, I kind of have to trick myself and act like I'm somewhere else than when I'm at my desk. And that's been very, very helpful for me. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna start transitioning into a, just a couple of questions that are more about your experience at Wayne Law as a whole and less about your experience doing classes in a remote setting. So for those of you who have done some type of experiential learning um, opportunity, whether it was a clerkship or working for corporate counsel, can you talk a little bit about how you were placed in that, how you found it, um, and just in general, what your experience looked like? And Michaela, I'll kick it back to you to start. Sure. So um, for the corporate counsel externship program and for the public service externship program, you apply directly through Wayne Law. So um, there's an application process and you I believe you kind of write an essay, you have a cover letter, your resume, transcript, those kind of same things. Um, but you don't necessarily interact with the placement as much as Wayne Law receives your application and then they place you. Um, and that was very, very exciting for the corporate counsel externship. I didn't really have a have an opinion, I guess, on where I was placed. I knew I just wanted some kind of corporate counsel experience, whereas opposed with the public service externship, I really wanted to go to the Detroit Justice Center. And so I made that clear in my application and um, Professor Robichaud, who was over it, she was like very, very just kind to me. And I told her I really wanted to go there and she made sure that would happen for me. So shout out to her. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of how my process went. There's an application process and then the placement is selected for you. Thanks. Okay, Philip, do you want to talk a little bit about your experience with the uh, experiential learning portion of your degree? Sure. So um, this past summer, I had a judicial externship. Um, it was at the trial court level. level, And I, I kind of found that on my own. It, it wasn't it wasn't advertised on any of the law school job boards uh, or through Wayne. I knew that this particular judge handled a veterans treatment court. I'm a vet. It's a specialty court for veterans that have gotten in trouble. Um, so I was able to reach out to him through one of his clerks and, and line that up. And then I fed that back through Wayne, making sure that all the boxes were checked so that I could get my credit. Um, and then for the public externship, um, kind of like Michaela, I, I applied through Wayne but the National Labor Relations Board is, is a governmental entity. It's kind of a weird fit within the public service externship piece, um, but that's what it falls under. So I, it, it was one part Wayne, one part reaching out directly to them to make that happen. Awesome. And then Lauren, if I remember correctly, I think you participated in one of our clinics, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. So I did the business and community law clinic during my second year as a general student. And um, now during my third year, I've returned as the advanced business community law student. Um, it's similar to the corporate externship in that you apply through the school. Um, there's a single clinic application. You'll indicate the ones that you're interested in, and then you'll interview and, um, you know, fingers crossed you get placed. Uh, but it's a really great experience, and I highly recommend any clinic to anyone we have. I, I think it's six. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so there's a wide range of different topics and opportunities. Um, and you can, I mean, each one of them is, you know, world experience. And I think that you can see the progress in your work, or at least I've been able to see that. Um, and I've also done, uh, I did a judicial internship like Philip, 
Um, I was at the Eastern District downtown with Judge Cohn, who is now recently retired. Um, and like Phil mentioned, you have to seek those out on your own. However, I would just um, add on to that and say, you know, the school provides you with um, prior students and alumni and current students as well who participated. If you have questions about applications um, or how to seek them out, they're still um, involved in terms of helping you seek them out on your own. Thanks. And just going back a little bit to the clinic, can you talk a little bit about more about what makes the clinics just a little bit different as being a student attorney while working in the clinics versus doing an externship or an internship? Yes. Yeah, so I haven't done, um, like I haven't participated in the corporate um, externship, but as a student attorney, you're working one-on-one -on -one with a professor uh, who's going to be your supervisor. Um, it's unique in that you have your own clients and you're working on your own matters. Um, but then you also have this uh, review or reflection process that you might not get um, simply by doing a clerkship um, or excuse me, or judicial or excuse me, a corporate internship or something and that you're getting constant direct feedback on your work. Um, and I mentioned I did a summer associate uh, my second year and those supervisory meetings, getting that constant feedback was extremely helpful on preparing me for my future job. Thank you for that clarification. So the next question I have, so thinking back to your 1L year when you were starting off as a brand new law student, um, and Michaela, I'll start with you. What was the toughest part of adjusting to law school when compared with your undergraduate studies? Yeah, so the toughest part, honestly, for me was kind of relearning how to study and how to study correctly for law school. Um, I was in I was a psychology major, psychology major in undergrad. So a lot of what I did was, unfortunately, looking back was memorizing information like we went to class and you kind of like had to retain as much as possible, memorize it. And then you took exams. And that was kind of just that on that. And so when I got to law school, I spent the first portion, like feeling like I had to memorize everything. And then I was like, okay, wait, 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 that is just uh, not how you should study for a law school exam. And so um, I had older students who kind of like, were like, oh, do you need help with anything? Like, um, here are some outlines that I have from last year or things like that, and kind of showed me how to study. So honestly, the tough, toughest thing for me was probably transitioning to learning how to study for law school and for a law school exam. Thank you. Um, Philip. what about you? Well, at my advanced age, it's been a number of years since I've been in academia. So uh, I had a How lot of- How about from a working experience then? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, Let me no, adjust no, the no. question a little it, bit. It, no, it's still very relevant. I mean, I had to, I had to, it really took me a while to, to just get back in, into good habits. And, you know, if, if you had an easy go at undergrad, um, don't make the mistake of assuming it's going to work the same way in law school because it probably won't. And now you're in an environment where, you know, you may have been top in your class an undergrad. Now you have a whole bunch of people that were kind of towards the top of their class. Um, so it's, it's, it's just different. So you have to really buckle down and, and study hard and don't try to recreate the wheel. Like Michaela said, talk to older students, figure out what works. Um, there will be workshops on, on proper study habits and how to tackle law school. Take advantage of all of those and set yourself up, up for success from, from early on. Thanks. Okay, Lauren, any thoughts? I would just reiterate what Phil and Michaela both said, really. It's just learning how to prepare for the unexpected. Um, I had one gap year before going to law school, so I wasn't too far out of undergrad. Um, no matter what your background is, I think one thing about law school that's kind of nice is that it is so new that you are all starting at the same place. Um, but like Michaela said, there's a lot of opportunities to learn how to read like a law student, learn how to study like a law student, learn how to take a law exam. Um, and our first year professors are very aware of that. Uh, and they really just walk you through it step by step so that, you know, everyone is equally prepared 
Um, I think that's a lot of people's concerns when they come in is I did such and such an undergrad. How am I going to like learn how to be a law student? Um, but we know it's difficult and we've all been there and the professors have been there too. They're all, if, if not most, have a JD as well. Um, and everyone is just really, really kind and ready to help. And like Phil said, and Michaela said again, um, there's just tons of opportunities. You can, you can have like six mentors. <laughs> everyone will just give you their study guides. Um, so it's just a very open experience and it's, it's easy to catch up uh, no matter how like nervous you might be coming in. Great. Okay, so next question. Um, so thinking back to when you were applying to law school and prepping for the LSAT and writing your personal statement and gathering all of those materials, do you have any tips or tricks for both studying for the LSAT, things that you found that worked well for you, and then any tips and tricks on writing the personal statement? Again, anything that you did that you thought really worked well for you? And Lauren, I'll kick it back to you to start. Yeah, so regarding the personal statement, I guess I was semi-fortunate just in that I knew what I wanted to write about. I think my only advice is just to write about something um, that you're passionate about or that's important to you because I think that that can really come across. Um, and as far as the LSAT goes, I think my best advice in terms of preparation is to just kind of trust yourself uh, in terms of what works best for you. I did an in-person class and this was, you know, five, five years ago or something like that when that was available. Um, but I knew that having an instructor and having somewhere to be um, at a scheduled time would keep me regimented and that that was the best for me. But that being said, a lot of other people are really uh, successful by doing independent study. Um, so I would just encourage everyone to maybe try out different methods, find what works for you, and don't feel pressured to change your method based on other people. Um, really just, just figure out what's comfortable and, and best for you. Thanks. Philip, any thoughts? Any other pieces of advice? Yeah, um, I actually took my LSAT when I was living in Mexico. And um, I, I, I used exclusively Khan Academy available through LSAC to prepare. Um, I would say, again, manage your time, be uh, very particular about studying to prepare for it, and uh, take the pra practice exams because test familiar familiarity is a, is a huge thing with this test. I think most people see a bump, um, you know, each subsequent time that they take it because they're more familiar with how it is and the time constraints and all of that. Um, also, oh, what was the other part of the question? Um, personal statement. Ah, yes, personal statement. Um, be genuine. Don't tell them something you think they want to hear. Uh, they want to know you. So just be as genuine and, and as real as you can about yourself when you do your personal statement. Thank you. And Michaela, any additional thoughts? Honestly, they summed it up. Everything I was going to say, they have said. Oh, so no. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so next question. Um, if you all considered other law schools, what were the most important factors that you looked at when you made your final decision? Uh, and I'll start back with you, Michaela. Sure, so a big thing that I looked at was um, kind of like the rep rep reputation of Wayne Law attorneys in the legal community. Um, I just felt that attorneys from Wayne Law carried themselves very well. Um, I felt that they were prepared, um, which is clear from our bar passage rate um, this year around, um, but they were just very prepared and also I felt that they were um, connected with the legal community in Detroit and also outside of Detroit. And that was something that was very important to me um, because you go to law school and you want to go on and pass the bar and get a job. And so when looking at law schools, it was just very important that I picked one where I could see myself going on to pass the bar and get a job. So, yeah. Thank you. Lauren, what about you? Um, yeah, so my, I applied to schools 
across the country. <laughs> I was very indecisive at first. Um, the biggest thing for me was honestly finances. I mentioned I had like one gap year from undergrad. I was not going to law school with like a blank check. So <laughs> scholarship was huge. Um, but beyond that, uh, it really came down to the people. Um, I remember touring the school and I was very fortunate. I actually had Dean Fox as my tour guide. Um, so it was absolutely wonderful. I met uh, like three professors on the tour and everyone was just so nice and welcoming. Um, and it, it, I just wanted to be there. It was a, an environment where I felt I could be successful, where I felt not before I was even a student, I felt comfortable reaching out to those professors with questions. Um, so for me, it was really, uh, I was looking for a place where I thought I could be successful and Wayne really um, just, I guess, met that criteria. And Philip, what about you? Um, well, you know, coming back from Mexico, I knew we were going to be living in Southeast Michigan. There are only uh, really two law schools in Southeast Michigan. And uh, Wayne was clearly my number one choice. Um, my brother-in-law is an attorney here, and I, I, I was able to quickly find out the, the reputation and see the value that Wayne provides. Um, I'm using um, funding through the Veterans Administration. So if there's any veterans online that would like to talk about that, you know, contact the admissions office and we can circle back to that. But um, if, if you are paying for it out of pocket or using student loans, a quick Google search will show you, um, you know, cost of tuition versus average starting salary. I mean, it's it's the best bang for the buck here. Thank you. OK, so going back a little bit to when you first started your 1L year, what is one thing you wish you would have known before starting law school? And Philip, I'll kick it back to you to start. I guess maybe a little bit more real assessment of, of the, the stressors that are associated with it, really understanding how class is and, and the, um, you know, the methods that the uh, professors use. Um, I adapted pretty quick, um, but it's still, you know, being a little bit older, I, I think it probably took me a little bit longer. Uh, it all comes back to what I kind of stated before is good study habits, good time management. All of that is really, really key to being successful in law school. So, Michaela, what about you? Um, yeah, so I think that the biggest thing, law school is a process. Like everybody says this, like you're going to feel like you don't know what's going on. You're going to eventually get it. You're, it's going to click. It's going to make sense to you. Everybody goes through that. But I think the biggest thing for me is um, knowing that I belong there. So, you know, when you are accepted at Wayne Law, know that you belong there. You didn't just get there by, you know, a random decision. You belong in your seat. Um, I think I suffered a little bit of imposter syndrome when I first got to law school. Like, what am I doing here? Do I even want to be a lawyer? Like, is this really for me? And um, I think the biggest thing is just knowing that I belonged in that seat. And that was kind of it. What about you, Lauren? Uh, for me, it would be very similar to Phil. Uh, it is an extremely stressful time, your first year, and especially that first semester. And I think it just goes back to being unexpected. You've never taken a law school exam, and then you have four. <laughs> and you need to do well, because those are your only grades. Um, and the best advice that I can give people and that I wish I had was just to feel confident in where you are because like I mentioned earlier, our teachers really do prepare you and prepare you how to study and you're going to get that first exam and you're going to be shocked at how well prepared you were. Um, and it's, it, for me, it was all about managing that stress and anxiety. Um, like my first semester went well, but then my second semester when I wasn't stressed, when I arrange my schedule differently because I wasn't as anxious was even better. Um, so yeah, just, just know that you will be prepared, even though, like Michaela said, it is a process and sometimes it takes a minute to figure it out and to feel that way. Um, but you, you will be ready and, and successful. Thanks. Okay. So 
what is your best piece of advice for anyone who is either planning to start this fall or is hoping to start law school this fall? What is like one piece of advice that you have for them? And Philip, I'll start with you. Um, I would say wrapping up any uh, stressors that you can before school begins. Uh, if that's if that's relationship issues, if that's financial issues, whatever those are, the more you can have kind of squared away um, because law school is going to be that big thing on top of it all. Okay. So the more you can get squared away before school starts, I would do that. That's my one piece. What about you, Michaela? I'm going to stay on brand with Phil and say, relax the summer before. Um, I think that's a huge thing. Like people say, you have to read this book before you go to law school, you have to do this. No, literally breathe, collect your thoughts because as soon as law school starts, the game is on and the ball is rolling. So please just rest the summer before starting law school. And I completely agree with that. That is probably the biggest piece of advice that I give when I am counseling students and doing admissions appointments when they're like, what can I do to get ahead? What can I do to prepare? relaxing, taking it easy, doing things to enjoy yourself, spend time with your family and your friends. If you feel like you absolutely have to do something, I recommend reading and that is reading anything just to get yourself used to reading a lot. So even if you're just reading a book that you really love for fun or something that you've been meaning to get to, even if it's not an academic piece of work, just doing more reading to really prep yourself for the amount of academic reading and specifically like legal case reading that you'll be doing in law school. I think is super helpful. Um, but I'm going to also kick the question to Lauren and see if she has any additional pieces of advice. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that's been said. I would really stress the relaxation part. Um, and I would also just add that when you do start, um, reach out to upper level students, second year and third year students. There's a lot of mentorship opportunities that will be to you, but don't feel afraid to just shoot someone an email or find them on LinkedIn. Um, I know it can be a little bit more difficult to meet people in a virtual environment. Um, and it is if it is virtual next year, normally like a, an upper level student might just come right up to you and kind of take you under their wing. And that's really easy. Um, but those opportunities might not happen as much. Um, but we love to help. We're here to help one else succeed, to tell them all of our mistakes and make sure they don't make them. Um, so just reach out to as many people as you can for advice and tips. Yeah, I will definitely echo that too. Um, as a former law student, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong based upon your experience as current students, law students love to talk about being law students and <laughs> being in law school. So as a new 1L, do everything that you can to find a mentor, even if it's like an unofficial mentor. That was probably one of my favorite parts about law school is acting as a mentor. And just, it wasn't even a law school specific mentor, like even just a little bit like of a law school life mentor, just kind of talking people down when they are going through something that I had already been through that I had the same exact like worries about and made it through just fine. Um, some of my very best friends from law school, I still talk to, they were my mentees. <laughs> when I was in law school. And so I completely agree with that statement, Lauren. So before I move on to some of the Q&A questions that we've gotten live, and I'm gonna handle um, a good chunk of these just because some of them seem to be a little bit more administrative than law student life. Um, I wanna ask you guys one more question. So, so far, uh, what has your favorite part of law school been? Um, and Lauren, I'll start with you. Uh, definitely just the people. Um, when people tell you that you're going to be working with your, you know, the person to your left and right on the first day of class or the people now that you see in your Zoom classes, it's very true. Those are your coworkers, your opposing counsel, maybe a future judge. A lot of people stay in the area. Um, and it's not only do you get to meet great friends, lifelong friends, but you get to start building your career network immediately on the first day of class. And I think that that's really special and unique. Michaela, what about you? Yeah, honestly, I have to say the same thing, relationships. Um, 
yes, having classmate relationships and making lifelong friends, of course, but also I've built a lot of really great relationships with professors as well. And I just have to say that relationships have probably been my favorite part of law school because they're just so important and they're very personal. Mine, I'll speak to my relationships. They're very personal. Um, it's not superficial. Um, we don't just talk about law school, but, you know, we talk about everything. And I just, I really appreciate the relationships that I've made um, from law school. All right, Philip, anything additional to add? What has your favorite part of law school been so far? Same, same. It's, uh, it's you know, the people and that's from faculty to professors to you know, fellow classmates and upper level students and now the incoming classes. It's, it's just a great environment um, to be in. All right, thanks guys. So I'm gonna go through a few of these questions and I do think that there are a couple that I will kick back to you as well, but I'm kind of just gonna go down the line and answer some of them myself at first. So I see one here that says, for those of us that are looking to move across the country and are still waiting for a decision, where are you in the calendar process of rolling admissions? And do you think that the remote nature is contributing to any potential delays? So we opened our application for fall of 2021 on September 1st and have been accepting applications since September 1st. Our first batch of decisions went out in mid-January and at this point we're releasing decisions about every week, um, usually about once a week. I would say that no, the remote condition is not causing any delays. Um, we are still working equally as hard, if not harder to be as open with you guys as possible to get a decision back to you as possible. But what we have been seeing is a very, very large influx of applications to law school this year. And so I think that that is probably what is causing a little bit of a delay. But what I can tell you is that we're doing everything that we can to get a decision out to you as quickly as possible. So the next one I see here is, and I'm actually going to kick this one to back to you guys. So, and Michaela, I'm going to start with you. Um, what opportunities has attending Wayne Law opened up for you? Anything specific on civil, the civil rights front? Yeah, sure. Um, Wayne Law has provided so many opportunities that I didn't even know existed. I was introduced to the world of movement lawyering um, and my, so the beginning of my second year, so this past semester when I interned with the Detroit Justice Center. And I honestly really fell in love with movement lawyering. It was a term that I never heard um, before going to law school. And I just think that it's very impactful in being from Detroit and um, focusing on issues that are specific to Detroit residents was just very, very important to me. So I think on um, Specifically, opportunities that Wayne Law opened me up to is really just educating me about different pathways that I could take um, when graduating from law school. And I think that that's a huge thing. You never know what you don't know. And a lot of my like 1L year was learning what I didn't know and learning that there are so many pathways um, and so many things that people do with their law degrees. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so the next question I have that I'm going to take is says that this person is in the process of trying to find a summer internship. Any suggestions? So my suggestion is if you're a current undergraduate student, work with your career services office, um, work with your pre-law advisor, work with your academic advisor. If you are an alumni and you've already completed your undergraduate degree, work with your alumni, um, your office of alumni relations. Those individuals are going to help you with the connections and job placement and things like that. Um, and so that's where I'd recommend that you start if you're looking to secure some form of summer internship before you start law school. The next question I see here says, I'm planning on retaking the LSAT in June, and I wanted to ask if you think it's too late in the process to apply. So we will absolutely be accepting June LSAT scores. Our application deadline is August 1, and we will keep our applications open for fall of 2021 until August 1st. So the June LSAT will be the last LSAT administration that we will be able to accept for a fall 2021 start. All right, I'm going to kick this question back to my ambassadors. So is it difficult for you to engage with professors or professionals in the legal setting? I'm assuming in, because we're in a remote setting right now. What are you doing extra that helps you make these connections virtually? Lauren, do you want to take this one? 
Sure. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of just like scheduling purposes and accessibility, um, I think people and kind of touched on this earlier are almost more accessible because we all have the ability to hop on a quick Zoom call or phone call when we're not going between places. Um, especially professors, they've made themselves very available. Um, in terms of like networking outside of the school, um, Wayne is really great at presenting those opportunities. And I think that a lot of attorneys in the area um, and even like the Detroit Bar Association has been holding a lot of events because they know that it is difficult to network now. So whether you're a student, an alumni, um, or even just someone interested in going to law school, I think um, in general, the entire field, like the legal field has been doing a really good job of presenting these opportunities to you. Um, and if you want to do additional work, like I mentioned earlier, don't feel afraid to just reach out to someone, especially in COVID, because we do all understand these struggles. I don't think, I think ever anyone in the field pretty much would welcome, you know, an interested student or alumni uh, contacting them to talk um, or any, anything else that you're interested in. Thank you. Okay, um, Michaela, I'm going to kick this question to you. Um, do you feel that it's harder to sit and study longer now that you're in a remote setting? I know law school includes a lot of reading and with everything going on, the, or with everything being on the computer screen all day, how has that impacted you, if at all? Yeah, so I'm going to be very honest. I do find it harder to sit and read for longer portions. Um, Lauren mentioned this earlier, but she said that she used to go to the library and stay into the stay in the library until like eight, nine o'clock. Um, I was the kind of student that as soon as the library opened at 8 a.m., I was there and I would just sit there and read until class started and then come back to the library and on lunchtime I would read. Um, so I think that in while we're home, it's very different. And I had to learn to be more gentle with myself and maybe set a timer for an hour and then walk around for a second and then set a timer for another hour and 30 minutes and then maybe get some grapes or something like that. So I will be honest, it, it's been different. And I would just say that you have to be gentle with yourself. Um, learning on the computer, I'm sorry, Jill, I'm not, I don't wanna not answer the question. Can you repeat the second part of the question? Yeah, it was just talking about, have, have you found it more challenging to be like sitting at a computer and staring at a screen for longer periods of time since we are doing remote classes on um, yeah. remote learning versus being in a lecture hall with actual people in front of you? Sure. Yeah, I think it's also just different. So um, you definitely have to schedule time to walk away from your computer or even like on a Saturday, maybe not open your computer at all if you can afford to do that, because it, it can be kind of taxing to sit in front of, com of a computer all day, but it's not impossible and you just kind of have to learn yourself and learn what works for you. Thank you. Okay, Philip, I actually have a question that's been specifically directed to you. Um, so this individual is a fellow veteran and he would like to know how, it, how was the environment in classes since we are vets, does it seem to, and seem to view the world a little askew? <laughs> so anything different that you think your perspective before going to law school has made things seem a little bit different? Sure. So uh, branch of service is, is going to play a role in that. And, and, you know, what your background is there as far as your, your MOS, your, your job specialty. But I would say generally, if you have served, um, the stressors that you experienced in military service um, are going to aptly prepare you for the stresses of law school because you'll have perspective. I mean, this is academia military is 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 potentially lives on the line so you, you'll have that as a frame of reference you'll be able to adjust uh, that if, if nothing else the military teaches you how to adapt and overcome things so you'll you will be fine and there are other veterans there's a De detroit veterans bar association as well um so there's a support network and i'm all, always available whether or not i'm still in admissions uh two years from now i will be available to answer questions for veteran law students Thank you. Okay, let's see here. So there's a question that uh, asks about how long should you study for the LSAT? 
And so I will talk about this a little bit. And if you guys have any additional thoughts or did something differently, please let me know. So what we normally say when we are counseling students during admissions appointments is that most students can probably pretty prepare pretty well for about two to three months worth of studying a couple hours a day every week. Um, I would say if you can dedicate like two ish hours a day every day per week, we have found that most students have been able to successfully complete the exam and achieve a score that they're hoping for based upon that amount of studying. Obviously, everyone is different. It really depends on your schedule. That may not be feasible for someone who's working full time or maybe someone who's finishing up a full um, semester worth of classes. So it ultimately comes down to you, but generally a couple of months worth of prep and consistent prep, we usually see students find success with that. Um, I see a question here that asks about taking a gap year um, and what are some things outside of the LSAT prep that should be done when I take a break? Do you have any internship suggestions? So I always encourage students, if possible, try and find a legal internship or a, sh a shadowing opportunity. And the reason why I recommend doing this is not because it's necessary for applying to law school or getting into law school or even being successful into law school. I just think that a lot of students have a little bit of a gap in what they think practicing law looks like versus what practicing law really looks like. And so getting into the legal environment and seeing attorneys doing their job every single day will help kind of close that gap. And so it just makes sure that everything aligns. What you think law school, like being an attorney looks like actually aligns with what being an attorney really looks like. Otherwise, however, I've seen students use gap years in so many different ways. Really what we're looking for is to make sure that you're utilizing your time. You're not just sitting around doing nothing during your gap year. So if you decide to go and get a job, that's great. Or you decide to start volunteering or you decide to go and do work in the Peace Corps. Um, there are so many different ways that you can utilize a gap year and that it can still look really strong on your law school application. It's really just coming down to making sure that you're doing something that you think benefits you and that you're doing something. Um, Lauren, I, it looks like I have a specific question geared toward you. So any um, advice for an indecisive student who's interested in the law, but still unsure, specifically to Lauren, what made you indecisive about committing to law? Um, I wasn't indecisive, actually. Um, I had an in-house uh, internship during my gap year, so I was very fortunate. But for anyone who is indecisive, I would really recommend trying to find a legal internship or um, any type of, I guess, position that you can it, within the legal field to really find out if you want to do it. Um, continue talking to admissions, talk to us about your doubts, talk to other law students or attorneys that you're able to, that you know you're able to meet. Um, that can kind of like, I guess, talk through uh, whatever it is that you're unsure about. Absolutely. Okay, so we are wrapping up here. Um, we kind of touched on this with one of the questions I asked a little bit earlier, but I always like to end my student panels with this question and I'm gonna go around and have each of you guys answer it really quick. So Philip, I'll start with you. Why did you choose Wayne Law specifically? Yeah, once once I got to Michigan and I had an opportunity to tour and and meet people at Wayne, um, it it basically validated everything I I researched and found on my own. Great reputation, great people, uh, solid you know professors that add a, that more than prepare you for for legal practice. Um, you know, great campus. Um, it's it was just a an awesome awesome experience uh, once I got there. So it was a real real easy decision for me. It's the people. What about you, Michaela? Yeah. So why I actually chose Wayne Law was actually because I received the Damon J. Keith Scholarship, which is a full tuition scholarship for three years of your legal education, and that really just sealed the deal for me um, because finances are a very real thing to consider when, um, you know, deciding that it's time for you to go to law school. So that was, DJK was it for me. Thank you. Okay. And Lauren, what about you? Um, yes, yeah, so I also received a scholarship, which was extremely convincing. Um, and on top of that, I knew I wanted to work in the area. Um, and Wayne had those networking opportunities, but beyond all, like 
Philip said was like the people, the community. Um, I, I mentioned like I met Dean Fox, I met professors, students when I toured and it was really just a wonderful experience and I knew I was going to be happy. I knew it was a place where I thought I would do well and I would reach the career goals that I initially had in mind. Thank you. Okay, well, I just want to take another opportunity to thank all of our wonderful student panelists for taking time out of their day today to help me with this webinar. It's always so important, I think, for prospective students to get firsthand experience from current law students, um, especially because you guys are going through the things that they will hopefully one day be going through. And I just think it's always so nice to hear from you all. Um, otherwise, we are at 1 p.m. So our webinar is officially over. If we did not have an opportunity to answer your questions, please send us an email at lawinquire at wayne.edu. All three of our panelists that you see here are helping us behind the scenes, answering questions and replying to emails that are sent to that email address. So especially if you wanna speak more in depth with one of them, please shoot us an email and we will absolutely make that connection with you. Otherwise, we hope to see you during the next webinar. Thank you so much and have a great day.